All right, guys. Well, it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the end times, here in paradise, we are walking around the Chickasauga battlefield, the Civil War battlefield in uh, Chickamauga, Georgia on this suddenly spectacularly gorgeous Sunday, April 16th, 2023. And uh, I'm embarrassed to say you're all Georgia boy does not really know the history of this place. I don't know how many thousands of people were killed, how many clueless morons on both sides, how many bullet bags fell, how much blood was spilled. I know that Ariel says she can pick up on all of the ghosts uh, here at the Chickamauga battlefield that you can feel all of this death energy, but uh, this feels like any other beautiful walk in the woods on a gorgeous spring day in spring day in April in Georgia. Uh, all of these monuments everywhere. So uh, I, I mean, I'm really embarrassed. I think it was. 1863 was his battle and uh, I don't even know who won the battle of uh, Chickamauga do not do not even know who supposedly won this battle you know how many of these kids and probably the what percentage of these kids were like you know 18 to 22 years old coming here from all over the country to sit here and shoot each other. Oh, boy. What do we have up here? Okay, I guess we're coming to some monument to clueless morons. Let's see if we can learn anything about Clueless morons here on this lovely day in the end times. All right, this is the which monument? This is the South Carolina Battalion, I guess, uh, where a bunch of boys from South Carolina marched over here. To get shot. There you go. To her faithful sons, her faithful sons at Chickamauga, South Carolina erects this monument to commemorate the valor they proved and the lives they gave on this great battlefield. There you go. This was put here in 1901. Yes. This great battlefield. What do you think, little dog? Is this a great battlefield? So anyway, I I have told this story uh, several times on Humpty Dumpty Tribe about this piece of very romantic uh, family history that I've always been told about growing up and I've always like taken it with a little bit of grain of salt so the the family history that has grown up around me that I was raised with is that what happened in 1862, in the middle of the Civil War, in the middle of the Civil War, that three brothers from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, three Yankees from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, they were anti-war, you know, pacifists. 
they marched, well, walked however they got there. The, these three young men from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, came down to Rogersville, Tennessee, and married three sisters. Uh, in 1862, as some sort of anti-war protest or whatever, they came down here to, as a show of unity that my three pacifist, is, would that be one of my, would it be my great-great-grandfather or my great, I, I lose track, whichever one of them, uh, came down here a Yankee from Pennsylvania and married this woman in Rogersville, Tennessee, uh, <clears throat> which was my, I think my great grandmother, my grandmother's mother or my grandmother's grandmother. Anyway, you lose track from 1862 to 2023. And so I am a product of all of these anti-war pacifists. So we've always proudly told this story uh, how, you know, we are a cross between these Yankee men and these Southern, these strong Southern women. Uh, and I am a product of a long line of of pacifists, and I've always been proud of this because uh, I'm not exactly a fan of the Civil War or any other war. Well, anyway, my sister, uh, who is not with me on this walk, uh, she's back at the Airbnb with her either sprained or broken ankle. We were took a hike to a waterfall yesterday and she slipped and fell. Good God, I guess we're off to the hospital tomorrow. But anyway, that's another story. So anyway, she filled me in with uh, what sounds a lot more likely. She was just visiting our 89-year-old, uh, I think, uh, cousin of some sort lives down in St. Simons, Georgia, who really uh, spends a lot of time digging around our family history. And so this is the version, the real version of this bullshit romantic story about these anti-pacifist brothers from Pennsylvania coming down here. Well, the part about the brothers marrying the sisters is true. Okay, that part uh, sounds like it was true that these three Yankees came down here and married these southern girls, but it was not, uh, it was not in 1862. It was probably, although my sister did not catch the actual year, it was after the war was over, after the war was over. I mean, it, it never made any sense to me that these young pacifists could just be walking from Pennsylvania to Tennessee in the year 1862 without getting their asses killed or thrown in the, the brig or whatever. It never made any sense to me how these three uh, brothers pulled this stunt off uh, walking uh, whatever from Pennsylvania to Tennessee in the year 1862. They never would have made it. They would have had their asses killed or thrown in prison or one or the other or both. You know what I'm saying. It was all bullshit. So what the true story is that these after the Civil War, uh, that uh, my great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather came down here, what they call Reconstruction. You might have heard of this fellow, William Tecumseh Sherman, 
who came down here to Georgia and just pretty much burns down uh, the state of Georgia. Just, you know, going through this trail of destruction, you know, burned down the city of Atlanta and I went all the way to Savannah, I guess, just torching everything in his path. Pretty much everything that had been built uh, in the last hundred years. Uh, so anyway, what reconstruction means is they had to rebuild all this shit. They had to rebuild Atlanta and everything else. So how the hell do you think you rebuild Atlanta and every other town from Atlanta to Savannah? Well, you build it out of trees. It's just like what happened to the Redwoods in California after the 1906 earthquake. When they rebuilt San Francisco, they completely raped and pillaged the Redwood Forest. Well, the same thing happened here, although I'm glad to see the forest has grown back. They came down here to rebuild all of this. It was for the fucking job. They, they were loggers. Is what they were. My great grand, great great, or whatever the hell he was, he was a fucking planet eater. Now, he might have been a pacifist planet eater. We don't know. I don't know if he fought in the war or not. But what he was doing down here had nothing to do with uh, protesting the war. Uh, he was down here to make a fucking dollar bill. Uh, as a lumberman, building his fortune in the lumber business. I think that was the famous Papa Smith. That was either uh, Papa Smith or Papa Smith's daddy was a lumberman. <sighs> North Carolina doesn't have nearly the the monument of South Carolina. So I am the direct descendant of a fucking planet eater. <laughs> no wonder uh, I own three, no wonder I own three chainsaws. It's literally in my DNA to be a fucking planet eater. <laughs> so I'm so glad to have the, uh, the much more uh, reasonable sounding truth come out. <sighs> yeah, so here we got the Yankees from Ohio, <clears throat> the 35th Ohio Infantry of Clueless Morons. Here is the name of all the young men from the Ohio 35th, uh, the vast majority of them being privates. Oh, Jesus. So here's where. How many, how many young men died defending Defending the rights of planet eaters. It was all one big scam. The whole fucking Civil War. I'm sure Vegematic it was, would agree with this. Psst. That the Civil War was a fucking scam to burn down Atlanta. So uh, the goddamn planet eaters can come down and make a buck. It was what reunited this country. Uh, uh, why do you think the Yankees were coming down here for the second invasion? I think the term might be carpet bagger. Is it carpet bagger? Planet eating carpet bagger. I am the direct descendant of a planet eating carpet bagger. <laughs> oh, fuck. What a fucking surprise. I just. I love hearing, watching family legends bite the dust. Come on, little dog. Sancho. I'm going to go get my dog. My God.